Good morning, everyone. I thought I would come today and um, give it my best shot at trying to do a crochet video. I've been making these awesome scrubbies, and I thought, why not show how to do it? So I'm going to give it a shot. I've been using this uh, Yarn Bee Scrubology Scrub It Yarn. Today I'm going to use a pink and a white because I'm going to make a scrubby like this. But you can also just use the same color and do the outside. But I, I like to do these once in a while. I do them both. And then here's a couple more colors. They have this is beautiful teal color. And here's a pretty bright yellow. This one kind of makes me think of a sun. Anyway, I'm going to put you down here so you can see what I'm doing with my hands. And we'll give it a shot here. I want to tell you too that I got this um, instructions off the off YouTube from a lady named Creative Grandma, and she does an excellent job of explaining this. So I don't really know why I'm even um, doing it over, but I just want to try my hand at it. But she gets credit for the instructions. So when you open uh, this yarn bee stuff, you look on each end, and one of them looks like there's um, some yarn poked in there and so you grab that and that's how you find your end usually oh there's another one I'll pull on that um, this yarn does have a little trick to it to find in the end of it you just gotta go with the flow anyway this video is probably going to take about 15 minutes or so while I explain it to you. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a magic circle and I leave a tail down and I use my three fingers here and I go around once and then again back there and I put my working yarn on the back because I'm going to go underneath and grab that yarn and come up. And this is a little tricky. You've got to hang on to this and then I'm going to chain too. And you'll find as you're watching me crochet that I don't hold my yarn like anybody else. I was self-taught. No one ever showed me how to hold my yarn. So my opinion is if you can do your crochet and get results like I can, what difference does it make how you hold your yarn? Anyway, so this chain two counts as my first um, triple crochet. So I'm going to yarn over twice and then go under and pick up some yarn and go over yarn over go through two yarn over go through two yarn over go through two then you're going to yarn over twice go underneath and pick up yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two so counting this first chain um, two I'm going to want 14 in this circle and I don't want to mess with all of the uh, um, what do you call it uh, you have to just listen to me ramble on um, you know where you go in and you edit I don't want to mess with editing and all that so I'm just gonna make you have to pay attention and suffer through this while I do the whole thing so what I do is I just usually crochet a bunch of them and I'm doing triple crochets in here and that's yarn over twice go under in your middle of your thing make sure you're keeping this tail back and then it's yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two anyway I'm going to do a bunch of those and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to whoops and I'm going to count how many I have and then I'll show you the next step. So you can just watch this. Whoops, I missed one somewhere. I gotta do that one over. Yarn over twice. Gotta pay attention. I guess I can't talk and and crochet at the same time, apparently. So let's see. It doesn't use when I and when I'm not filming, I have timed myself. I'm gonna scoot this up a little bit. 
and it takes me about 11 to 12 minutes to make one of these. So they're a pretty fast um, crochet project and I can do them while I watch TV. I just have to stop and look down and um, count every once in a while. But this yarn, what I like about it is it is not hard on your hands. That's kind of why I kind of quit making scrubbies, crocheting them, was because the yarn or the tool, because back in the day when I first started making them, we used that bigger tool. I guess it was really net. And that stuff would just tear up your hands. So anyway, let me finish this one and I'm going to see where I am. Sometimes I get 15 and I have to drop one, so let's see. We got one, we're going to count the first, chain two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Ooh, I must have been talking. I made two extra. So I'm going to go back to that 14th one and get rid of those extra ones. Now I'm going to hold it like this. And I'm going to take that tail and I'm going to pull on that tail. And then you'll see that you've got these two loops and one of them is going in quicker. Or it's getting tightened up. So what I do is I grab that one and I pull on it till this is tight. Then I pull on my tail. And boom, there you go. Now, I'm going to go to the top of my chain two, and I'm going to slip stitch there, chain one, and then in that same hole, I'm going to do two single crochets. And then I'm going to go two single crochets in the next one, and I'm going to do that all the way around. And as you'll notice, this is kind of cupped but it's stretchy so it'll straighten out and as you crochet around it's going to straighten out so I'm going to go ahead and finish crocheting around and I know I realized I forgot my darning needle so I'm going to have to go over to my table and grab my darning needle because you do need that to weave in a couple of ends and I, even though I did the magic circle and I did it the extra um, wrap I still like to super secure it. So when I get to that point, I'm going to run over to my table and grab my um, I'm trying to see what is that over there. It looks dark. Anyway, I'm going to go over and grab my darning needle in a minute here. I always like to make sure I have slack here because I don't want it pulling tight. So I'm almost around and I'm crocheting two single crochets in each one of the um, stitches. Now when I get to the very end, the stitch that the first one came out of, I don't crochet into that. So I'm going to go up here to the top of that stitch and I'm going to make a slip stitch. And then I'm going to chain one, and then I'm going to cut this off, and I don't cut it very long. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull it through. Now here's the fun part. Look at this. See how thick this is? I'm going to pull this, and see if I've got my stitches there. I'm going to pull this and lock that in. Look at that. See how that made a tiny stitch? So now I gotta run over and get my darning needle. Be right back. <coughs> Excuse me. So I forgot to tell you, you need a darning needle. So what I do on the back, um, this is part of my magic circle. I'm gonna take a hold of this. And this is how I uh, thread yarn through the darning needle because it's just so much easier. I take it and on the, the thin side, I bend it over that towards the end of the yarn, squeeze it, pull it out, and then push it through there and boom. Saves me a lot of time. Now, 
I can see that this magic circle was going in this direction. So I'm going to go over the top of one of those stitches and I'm just going to go under a few stitches. It doesn't matter how many because you're just kind of just locking it. Pull that through. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to go over one of those stitches so I'm not just unsewing what I just sewed. So I'm going to go back through here and I'm going to pull that and just feel, I feel, just feel like it gives me a little bit of more reassurance. Um, that um, creative grandma, she cuts her stuff off, but I don't. I stuff it in the middle of it while I'm, when I'm uh, sewing the two together or crocheting the two together, really. So I'm starting another one doing just exactly the same thing that I did last time. And I'm talking so these are taking a little longer, but these are super quick, super simple to do and there's and they last. Those other ones that uh, I've made out of net and stuff, they just kind of get all wimpy and stuff after just a short time, but these are lasting very very nicely um they still are we've been how long do you think we've been using these jeff a couple of weeks scrubbies. the scrubbies these new scrubbies Whole about two weeks, yeah. okay and they're just as what'd you say i love it he said he loved it he, he likes it because it doesn't fold up when he's using it and it's big enough that it it's uh, not tiny in his hands and guess what you know what that means that means my husband does dishes so anyway he says you know it doesn't like fold over when he's it's kind of hard to make it fold over not really hard but it just doesn't want to do that because it's nice and fat but anyway he says it doesn't fold over and it's not wimpy and it just it, it just works really good so I think you'll be pleased with these and if you uh don't crochet, but you'd love to have some of these. I do sell them. You just have to contact me and um, we'll work out, you know, how much they are a piece and um, what it would cost for the postage and so on. So anyway, oh, I forgot to tell you how much these cost. These are, um, this yarn is $4.29. But of course, Hobby Lobby has yarn on sale about every two, three weeks. So you know I'm not going to pay full price, so I, I get it when it's 30% off. And if you're um, lucky and they've measured this right, you can get about four complete scrubbies out of one ball of yarn. Anyway, so I think I might be close. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And I need one more. There's my 14th triple crochet. Now I take this and put that in my left hand and, I, and remember how I showed you to, you pull on this and the, and the, there's two loops there. The one that starts to um, go in first, you grab a hold of that and pull this up tight and I have to put my finger on it. Pull it up tight till there's not a hole there. Let go of that and then pull your tail. And it's got a long tail, but you know, there's nothing else you can do. Anyway, then I'm going to go back up here to the top of my chain two, and I'm going to make a slip stitch. And then I'm going to chain one, and then I'm going to put two single crochets in that same stitch and see how it's cup shaped. It's kind of cool. I kind of spread it out a little bit. Anyway, um, this yarn is so stretchy. It works so nice. Anyway, I'm going to, I am doing this. I'm not going to. I'm putting two single crochets in each one of these, the top of these stitches. See right there, it's super easy to see. That big hole right there. Two single crochets in each one. And I'm going to show you when I get to the end how, if I was going to continue on with this color, putting the two together, what I would do, and then I'll um, end it and show you how I do it when I trim it with the other color. Just for something different.
Well, I'm getting there. It's almost done. I got hooked on making these scrubbies, I tell you. I hope I sell them all. I'm sure I will because everybody loves scrubbies and loves these kind of scrubbies. The night, especially if they're nice and they're going to last. So anyway, I'm back up to where I started. And I'm not going to put two single crochets in that very last one where the first one came out of. I'm just going to go to the top of the stitch, pull through, pull through. And I'm doing a slip stitch. And then I'm going to chain one. Now, if I was, um, but before I go on, I'm going to go ahead and, and weave in my back end so I don't forget that. It, I'm sure it would be fine because you pull it tight, but just for extra security, I like to weave it back and forth a couple of times. So, just make me feel good. Alright, now, if I were going to trim this in the same color, I have chained one. And then I will go back through in the same hole, in the same stitch. And then I would grab my other one that I made. And I would make sure that this, this tail is facing, both tails facing each other. Because that means the pretty side and the pretty side are up. And then I would just go through this one as well. Pull through a slip stitch. And then do a, um, that would be a chain one. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to trim with the other colors. So I'm going to go back to where I was. And I'm going to end this just like I did the other one. I'm going to take my scissors and cut it off. I don't know, what is that? Two inches? Inch and a half? If you yarn over, pull it through and then pull that tight. All right, so now since I'm doing it with the white, I'm going to make my slip knot, which I, I always just do this and I don't think about it. So um, if you need instructions on how to make a slip knot, you probably have to go elsewhere because I'm sure that I'm not very good at explaining. Anyway, I put my slip knot on there and I tighten it up. And I grab these two, and I like to, um, these ends that uh, were the ends we ended with, I like to kind of have them offset, but I like to have them towards the beginning so I can work with them. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. So I'm going to go through the top of one side, and then I'm going to go through a stitch on this side, and I go through both loops. So make sure you're going through both loops. And then I take my, my working thread and I just go over. It kind of wasn't really even going over. You just catch it. And so you go through and make a slip knot and then you do a chain one. And then you go to the next stitch on this side and the next stitch on this side. And do a slip stitch and a chain one. And you just continue this around. And I want to show you what I'm going to do when I get to where these tails are. Okay, right there's a tail. So I'm going to do a, a slip stitch. I think I might have said slip knot. Anyway, it's a slip stitch. A chain one. Okay, now this thing is here and it's kind of in my way. So I'm going to poke that down under. And I'm going to look and I'm going to go into that stitch where, that, where this tail is. And then... A stitch in the one behind and that's why I don't want them lined up because I don't want to mess with both of them at the same time slip stitch chain one then after I've done that I come back to the back and I find that one and I just kind of tug on it to make sure that it stays down in the middle where I don't see it so I continue on slip stitch chain one slip stitch chain one now I'm to the other side that has the tail. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go under it, slip stitch, chain one. Now I want to make sure that this thing is not going to be bugging me, so I put, poke it down in there and I go to the next stitch and I look and make sure that I'm going into the very next stitch over there. Come in here and I tug on that a little bit to make sure it's out of the way. 
And then I just continue around. After that, it's a breeze. You just do the slip stitch, chain one, slip stitch, chain one, all the way around. And I don't know if you um, need to see this slower. If you're on a computer, I think you can slow this down so you can see it slower, speed it up so you don't have to listen to me. But this is a, such a simple, simple um, pattern. I just love it. And see, when you're doing that chain one, it kind of gives a little hump there that makes it a little pretty there. So I just keep going around. And pretty soon I'm just getting to where I'm almost got this closed up. And so when I get um, to that point, then of course I don't want these things, these tails hanging out. So I just poke all my tails inside and I figure, you know what, that just kind of gives it a little bit more puffiness. It's not gonna hurt anything. And so I just poke them in there, including this beginning one. Just poke them all in there. Kind of makes it a little bit fatter. So I'm going to continue slip stitching all the way around. Almost got it closed up. Now see how quick and uh, simple this was? And I did not um, zim, zip through any of them or come back later. I just let you sit there and watch me do the whole entire thing. And so let's see, oh, I told you it was 15 minutes, but it's already 21 minutes. But when you're trying to explain things, of course, it takes way longer. Anyway, so I'm almost to the end here. And I just continue all the way. Now, in this case, I am going to, um, i got to make sure that one stays down in there. I am going to go clear into this very last stitch. Then I'm going to go into the first stitch there do you see that and i'm just going to pull up slip stitch i'm going to chain one and then i'm going to cut cut it off now this time i'm going to cut it off a little longer um that much longer i don't know what is that four inches so i'm going to cut that off clip that off make sure you got some good scissors because this does have like a stretchy part in the middle and it will, it's a pain, but just clip it good and it's not a pain. Anyway, so yarn over and pull through. And then again, we're gonna stretch it till it like pops right down there. Now I'm going to weave this in. And I just turn it over to the back and I just go along these stitches underneath, go under a few stitches, like that, and then I come up, and then I go over the top of that last stitch and back the other way, because these are going to be scrubbed with, thrown in the washing machine, and they need to be, they need to hold together. So I'm going to trim my tail, and I'm going to trim it close up without cutting my stitching. And there you go. Made a scrubby. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. Bye-bye.